Have a good day. Today we will be speaking about fiction. More specifically, we will discuss static fiction. Our objective is to define and calculate the coefficient of static friction and give the relationship between friction to the normal force. Apply the concept of static friction to problems involving constant motion or impeding motion. When two surfaces are in contact, frictional force opposes the relative motion or impeding motion. So with this pulling force, this block wants to move or we're trying to move this block in this direction. However, the frictional force is going to act in the opposite di direction. The frictional force results because of the different surfaces and therefore there's a molecular interaction. Frictional force are parallel to the surface in contact and oppose the motion or impeded motion. There are two kinds of friction that we will study. Static friction, which means there's no relative motion, and kinetic friction, of, um, that means there's relative motion. So let's consider this block, and uh, which is a four Newton block, and we, in this case, we're pulling this with the two Newtons. And let's compare this system with, say, uh, pulling a four, uh, with, uh, pulling with a four Newton force, and now notice that the normal force increases because we have increased the weight. So every time we increase the weight, the pulling force must increase to match. As you see, when we have 12 Newton, we have a six Newton, uh, six Newton pulling force. So the, therefore, the force required to overcome static or kinetic friction is proportional to the normal force. Therefore, we can write the frictional force to be some coefficient times the normal force and in this case, for kinetic friction, we can write some coefficient times the normal force. So mu s and mu k are basically referred to the coefficient of friction. Mu s is a coefficient of static friction. Mu k is a coefficient of kinetic friction. Here in this table, we can see that we have different um, materials um, acting on one another. So steel and steel, the coefficient of static friction is 0.47 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.75. Um, aluminum and steel is 0.61 and the coefficient of static of um, kinetic friction is 0.47. But notice that as the as the, um, every time we look at the coefficient of static friction, the coefficient of kinetic friction is always less. So it's, it suggests that the, the force in getting something going is going to be larger than the force to keep it moving. Um, observe that, the, that the, the coefficient of static friction are unit, unitless quantity. When an attempt is made to move an object on a surface, the static friction slowly increases to a maximum value. This means that the pulling force has to overcome the static friction in order for the block to move. So when this inequality is satisfied, then no motion is occurring. Observe that the, 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 the maximum friction of force then is then related to the normal force. So in this, in this model, we, module, we will use the following equation. We refer only to the maximum value of the static friction and we simply write that fs max is equal to mu s times the normal force for motion that is impeding the resulting force is zero and that means the sum of the force is zero so it's in equilibrium so in this case we are saying that the block here is at rest, so therefore the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be zero. And in that case, um, P is equal to Fs. So here, the weight and the normal force are balanced and do not affect the motion. Let's consider an example. If mu k equals 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and mu s equals to 0.5, what horizontal Pull, uh, pulling force P is required to just start a 250 Newton block moving. So the first thing we want to do is to draw a free body diagram. In this case, we draw 
the normal force that comes from the surface pushing up on the block, the weight of the block acting down because of gravity, and because of, of a pulling force, there is a, a, there's a frictional force uh, of static friction. The second thing that we want to list and label what is to be found. So in this case, we want to find P. Um, we want to find P in this case, and we know um, our coefficients of static friction. We know the weight of the block. Then to recognize for impending motion that P minus Fs is equals to zero because the block is not moving. For this case, we have P minus Fs equals zero. Um, so to find to find P, we need to know Fs, which is given by mu s times the normal force. We can get the normal force by considering the sum of the force in the vertical direction. So the sum of force in the y direction is equals to zero because the block is not moving up and down. So the normal force is equals to uh, in the W, which is 250 newtons. Next, we can now find Fs from using um, this equation. If we know Fs, then we can then find P from that. So since P equals to Fs, and Fs equals to, um, to 125, then we can find P equals to 125. Now what this tells us, in order to get, since this here is the maximum force just before this block move, in order to get this, get this going, we must have a pulling force of at least 125 in order to violate that inequality. So in order to, to have motion, we need to violate the in, inequality. And this force of 125 is needed to just start the motion next week. Now next we can consider P needed for constant motion. That's when um, we have kinetic friction involved. Mm -hmm. So now in finding the, the frictional force due to kinetic friction, we redo the same thing again, and we can find the normal force. And from the normal force, we can get the kinetic frictional force because we know mu k. And in this case, we from the x, the sum of force in the x direction, we know P is equals to Fk, and therefore, that means there's a direct relationship between P and the normal force in this case. And therefore, we see P is equals to 75. But observe that P, which is the, which is the pulling force when, while the object is in motion, is less than the pulling force to get it going. So therefore, the force associated with static friction is, is greater than the force associated with kinetic friction. So here's a, a question, a quicker question we could ask. So when considering uh, uh, problems, we need to read and draw and label the problem. To draw a free body diagram for each body, uh, to choose our x or y axis along the motion of impeding motion and choose the direction of motion as positive. Um, identify the normal force, write uh, and write the following. And then for equilibrium, we write for each axis, the sum of forces in the x direction, sum of force in the y direction uh, must be equal to zero. So both sum has to be equal to zero. And then we can solve for the unknown quantity. So in summary, the maximum force of static friction is the force required just to start the motion. And therefore, this condition, when this condition is obeyed, then there's no motion happening. Equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium exists at the instance that the sum of the forces are equals to zero. That's mean the body is not moving. So again, we choose the axis along the direction of motion. As we see, we do here, so that's the positive direction. And therefore, uh, this here would be opposing our motion. And similarly, we choose down as being negative and we keep up as positive. And therefore, when we write our sum, we take that into consideration. 
in, in some way, the static friction, uh, in static friction, there's no motion, therefore this condition must be satisfied. Uh, for uh, relative motion, then we can find the, the kinetic friction by, uh, by this equation. Procedure for solution of equilibrium problem is the same for each case, whether, um, whether we consider static friction or whether we consider kinetic friction, the, we need to find the sum of the forces in the x and y direction and equate them to zero. I thank you for your time.